Hey everyone, I'm Niharika. I'm a software engineer at Facebook, and I'm speaking to you from my home in the San Francisco Bay Area. Before we start, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. I enjoy traveling, and in the pre-COVID era, I've been fortunate enough to travel to quite a few places around the world. In particular, I love collecting art from the places that I visit, and you can see some of this collection behind me. More recently, I've taken up watercolor painting as the next best alternative during this lockdown to help me recreate some of those experiences while I'm at home. So today, I will be talking to you about Facebook's auto queuing service, or Fox, and how we scaled it. My colleague Akshay will join me later today to tell you more about the current state of the system and how we reach this point. So, why do we need a distributed priority queue in the first place? There are several operations across the Facebook ecosystem that benefit from running asynchronously. And what that means is they can run at some point in the future or be passed on to another server. Such asynchronous processing requires a place to store work. However, designing such a storage and retrieval system at Facebook scale while providing performance guarantees like low latency and fault tolerance makes this a challenging problem, which is why we built Fox. Fox is a distributed priority queue that enables such asynchronous processing scenarios. It provides rough ordering guarantees and can be used for generic queuing needs across Facebook. Let me explain to you the role of Fox using a simple example. Alice here is trying to upload a video onto her Facebook page or Instagram account. She uses her phone to drag and drop a video and it shows up instantly. However, there's a lot going on within this short period of time. So let's unpack this a little bit. The video has to be encoded first and perhaps there is also subtitles that need processing. And these can be time-taking operations that can be sped up if they're processed in parallel. So the video is broken down into chunks and stored in Fox. These chunks are then retrieved by workers that process them in parallel to enable a seamless and fast video upload experience for Alice. But the story doesn't end there. Videos and media in general needs to be verified for integrity so that we can take down violating content. These integrity checks are typically machine learning or inference jobs that could take up a lot of memory and require a lot of computational resources. So these checks are then enqueued to Fox and they make their way to powerful machines that process them and verify content. And finally, we would like to notify Alice's friends about her uploaded video. Several checks may need to be performed before actually sending those notifications out. And doing this while Alice is waiting for her video to be uploaded makes for a laggy and poor user experience. So this work is offloaded to Facebook's Asynchronous Computing Infra, or Async, which uses Fox to buffer these jobs. These jobs then eventually run and send out notifications to eligible recipients. You can see in the simple example how Fox is helping in video encoding, performing integrity checks, and sending out notifications. And over the years, Fox has grown to support several other use cases. And for each of those, Fox enables low latency, helps customers drive down cost by buffering these jobs and running them when capacity is available, and helps in providing a better user experience. My colleague Akshay will now tell you about the evolution of Fox. Thanks, Niharika. I'm Akshay, a software engineer on the Fox team. I've been at Facebook and on the Fox team for almost three years now. Like almost everyone, I've been working from home during this unprecedented time. Before the pandemic, I really enjoyed traveling and scuba diving, as in the photo here. Since the pandemic, I've picked up new hobbies, like woodworking, and I rely on videos to teach me how to make things, like this stool that I often sit on. I'm super fortunate to work on the infrastructure that powers videos, and I'm really excited today to tell you about how we built and scaled Fox. Let's rewind back to 2017, before Fox existed. Async is Facebook's asynchronous compute platform, kind of like AWS Lambda. Today, it processes close to a trillion jobs per day. 
Back in 2017, async used to store these jobs directly in a MySQL database. This meant that async had to understand both the storage layer as well as the compute layer. It was difficult to scale both independently, and operationally, it just became prohibitively expensive to manage both. This is when Fox was born. So in 2018, async began looking at other queuing systems, but none quite fit the bill. So the async team decided to build Fox as a horizontally scalable distributed priority queue. Now, async could focus on the compute while Fox managed the storage. This allowed both systems to scale fairly well independently. Since then, Fox has grown to support hundreds of customers across the Facebook stack, ranging from video infra, data infra, AI infra, and many, many others. This exponential growth has caused some pretty interesting scaling challenges, which we'll get into later in the talk. Let's look at what a typical Fox use case looks like. So a typical Fox use case has two components, a producer and a consumer. Producers will call NQ or put items into the queue. Among other things, an item contains a payload, a deliver after timestamp, and a user-defined 32-bit priority. Fox will deliver items in priority order once they are ready to be delivered. This ability to defer delivery and order items in a custom way are two of the key differentiating features that Fox provides. On the other side are consumers or workers. These machines will pull Fox for items they need to work on. In other words, they are dequeuing from the queue. Note that when Fox dequeues an item, it is actually leasing it to the worker. I'll talk more about lease shortly. When the worker is done processing the item, if the work succeeds, it will ack it to the queue. This is telling Fox, hey, I'm done with the item, feel free to del uh, delete it, there is no reason to deliver it again. On the other hand, if the worker needs to reprocess the item, either because it failed or for any other reason, it can knack the item to the queue. This tells Fox to deliver it, potentially at a later time, maybe in a different order. This flexibility makes it very easy for people to write fault-tolerant distributed systems on top of the queue. Now, what happens if the worker dies? Is the item lost forever? No. Remember I mentioned that Fox leases the item to the worker. What this means is, if the worker does not ack or knack the item in a specified period of time known as the lease duration, Fox will re-deliver the item as if it were knacked. In addition, Fox provides workers the ability to extend the lease of an item, for example, if processing takes longer than that lease duration. This allows the worker to kind of heartbeat back to Fox, telling it, hey, I'm alive and well, I'm processing the item, no need to re-deliver it. Now, these producers and consumers are spread all over the world, as is Facebook's traffic. In order to manage this global traffic, Fox must be present in all the data centers that Facebook has around the world. So where does Fox actually store these items? Fox uses sharded MySQL. Having a transactional database like MySQL provides really nice guarantees for the developer. Uh, for example, Fox can write data atomically without worrying too much about consistency. In addition, MySQL has secondary indexes which allows Fox to efficiently make complicated queries, such as, give me all the ready-to-deliver items in their priority order. MySQL is replicated in around the world. So we might have a primary in region A and two replicas in region B and C. What happens if region A goes down? MySQL will promote the replica in region B to be the new primary. This allows data availability even in the face of region failure. Note that because Fox is write heavy, Fox will always communicate to the primary. So what happens to those items that were originally in region A, but have now showed up in region B? We'll talk more about that later on in the talk. But first, let's look a bit more at the Fox architecture. So as previously mentioned, Fox is a collection of hosts and a collection of shards 
that are spread all over the world. Fox exposes a thrift interface that allows customers to NQ, DQ, ACK, and NAC items. We use an internal service known as Shard Manager to maintain this mapping of hosts and shards. Shard Manager ensures that a shard is owned by at most one host, and it minimizes downtime when a shard is unassigned. Any downtime would lead to delays in processing of jobs that Fox has. In order to manage all of these hosts and route traffic globally, the Fox team built a routing layer. Before we look at routing, let's look at how a single host can handle an NQ call. What happens when a producer actually calls NQ into the queue? Well, a Fox host receives that NQ request and puts it into a buffer of items that need to be inserted. Each shard that's assigned to the host has a writer thread. This writer thread is pulling the buffer for work that it needs to insert into the shard. So for example, this second writer thread here might pick up item one from the buffer and then put it into the MySQL shard. This naive approach has a few problems. For one, if a writer thread is able to write items faster than any of the others, it will pick up more work from the buffer, overloading its own shard. In addition, if Fox has a traffic spike, these writer threads will pick up all that additional work, sending it to the MySQL shards, again causing overload. This overload is particularly dangerous, especially on NQ, because you end up in a situation where Fox is adding more items to shards, causing them to become unhealthy, causing queries to slow down, and ultimately this means consumers can't get items out of the shards. This was the cause of a pretty big outage that Fox had in Thanksgiving of 2018, and we learned a few lessons since then. For one, it's very important to protect your downstream. In our case, this meant applying rate limits on the writer threads so that they wouldn't overload the shards. Now, if Fox experiences a traffic spike, Fox will push back and fail the request rather than taking down the MySQL shards. In addition, we shouldn't keep adding items to bad shards. So now, if the writer thread knows that a shard is bad either because queries are slow or failing, it won't NQ new items to that shard. Finally, it's important to constantly be load testing the system so that issues are caught before they hit production. Since this outage, the Fox team runs continuous load testing to test all sorts of failure scenarios. This has allowed us to catch bugs before they land in production. And it's even let the team move faster because we can ship code with more confidence without worrying about what it might do under load. So at this point in the presentation, I've talked about a typical Fox use case and looked at some of the scaling challenges we've seen on the NQ side. But what about the DQ side? What happens when you make a DQ call? How do items actually come out of the queue? Well, to talk about this, I'm going to hand it back over to Niharika. Thank you. Thanks, Akshay. Now that we've seen how NQs are handled on an individual host, let me explain in simple terms how Fox handles NQs globally. In order to evenly distribute load and utilize capacity in the most efficient way, data is stored randomly across the fleet of hosts during NQ. However, it doesn't necessarily remain on that original host. The MySQL DBs that contain this data are constantly moving between hosts to help us maintain high availability and enable low latency, especially in scenarios such as a host or a data center outage. And this poses a significant challenge during DQ. The non-deterministic nature of storage and the fact that it's constantly changing makes it hard to tell where data is present. So a naive approach for DQ could be to route requests randomly. But this approach could take us to a host that does not even contain data. It could take us multiple, D multiple DQ requests in order to even find a good host. For example, here, in order to get to data on host N, it would take us up to N DQ requests. And this is time taking. It introduces delays. In fact, this is a scalability bottleneck. The larger your tier is, the worse the delay is. And the tier inevitably becomes larger over time. 
as we're onboarding more customers. Note also how we're using valuable resources to process wasteful DQs. So this is also an efficiency problem. And lastly, this naive approach does not allow us to prioritize items between queue hosts or prefer hosts that may have accumulated an older or a larger backlog. To tackle this challenge, we, we built an intermediate component called the Fox Router that proactively and rapidly fetches data distribution information and stores it in memory. In addition to identifying the hosts that actually contain data, metadata like priority and the age of the items are also fetched. When a client sends us DQ, it is routed via Fox Router, where this in-memory state is looked up in priority order to route the request to roughly the queue host that contains the highest priority item. This approach has allowed us to support low latency use cases and, rap and rapidly recover from outages that may cause an uneven distribution of data. Having this uh, intermediate component in place also allows us to uh, implement various algorithms to cater to different traffic patterns and usages. We're also looking at complementary approaches of new NQ strategies that help us optimize item retrieval times. As I mentioned previously, during NQ, data is stored randomly across the fleet of hosts. This leads to a quote unquote thin spreading problem where a host in the fleet only contains a small number of items. Instead, we're looking into approaches of concentrating the data on a subset of hosts, which are repeatedly chosen during NQ. This reduces the dynamic nature of storage and makes it more predictable to locate it. This also helps us onboard new customers without impacting existing ones, as any increase in the tier size does not affect the hosts that were previously selected for NQ. This is one of the key challenges that we hope to solve in the near future. Which brings me to some of the key learnings and takeaways that we have had from building and scaling Fox. In that, routing is hard. Different use cases have different traffic patterns that need to be optimized around different requirements, which makes this challenging. Also, precise ordering is not always required. Trading this off for horizontal scalability has helped us greatly simplify our architecture. And finally, proactive load testing helps us identify bugs and system limits before they ever appear in production. I hope these learnings help you scale your systems as we've done with Fox and that you enjoyed this talk. Thanks for watching.